Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. I am Callum Upton and you are not. Now, if you've spent any time on the internet in the last couple of years, you've probably seen this ugly bugger somewhere on your timeline or somewhere on your newsfeed. These ugly buggers are called the Board Ape Yacht Club. They are, if for very few somehow don't know what these are, they are NFTs. They are JPEGs of monkeys that you can do absolutely diddly squat with, nothing. They just sit there, I was gonna say sit and look pretty, but they don't, they just sit there looking like the horrendous amalgamation of different art styles that they are. That is until recently. Recently, the founders of Board Ape Yacht Club, Yuga Labs, have launched their first ever game. Surely, you might be thinking, Cal, surely this went wrong. And you would be incorrect, it didn't go wrong, it went horrendously wrong in true NFT, crypto, Web3, blockchain, metaverse fashion. It did not go well. And the brilliant part about this story is that everything that went wrong is tied back somehow to the things that they said Web3 was protecting against, yet it went wrong. So let's have a look at what this actually was. So the first ever Board Ape Yacht Club game called Dookie Dash, yes, as in poo, because poo is funny. Haha, <laughs> big memes. Well, I should probably explain to you what this is. Dookie Dash is essentially a endless runner style game where monkeys do the poo and you, you go through the sewer to collect things. And you can only do this if you've got a Bored Ape NFT. Which, you know, is to be expected. Grifters be grifting and whatever the saying is. Now, the point of this was that if you take part in this endless runner game with your ugly monkey, your ugly monkey will get upgrades to the NFT based on the score you get in this endless runner. Now, do you think that they did this um, as a game on the blockchain where smart contracts invoke new things that happen and it's all kind of authenticated through blockchain? Because after all, the, the NFTs are on the blockchain. Well, you would be forgiven for thinking that, because that would make sense. But no, of course, they, they didn't do that. Why would they do that? It makes sense. Instead, they released this game as a web browser game. Now, immediately, I'm thinking, well, Web 3 is falling apart at the seams pretty quickly, so of course they're going to release it on Web 2, the inferior, um, less grifty brother of Web 3. But I didn't quite expect it to go as badly as it did. Now, quite shortly into the release of this game that was going to run for three weeks, there were some problems. People were live streaming the game on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And it became quite apparent that some people were getting insanely high scores consistently back to back in an almost inhuman way. Because wait for it, cheating. Now, this is essentially a Flash game in browser that connects to a regular Web2 server. And essentially this game is a endless runner with segments of a path procedurally generated as and when they are needed. But they are generated off what we call a seed, a string of numbers and letters that basically, if you use that seed in multiple levels, they will all play exactly the same. The level is generated off of that string of numbers and letters. Now, people figured out quite quickly. Well, if we know how the game generates stuff based on the seed, surely we can predict what's about to come. And that's correct. That is the point of a seed. However, the user is never supposed to know how the thing is generated or the seed. They can know one and not the other, but never both. Because if they do, well, it's not random procedural generation anymore. It's kind of the player can literally know what's coming. Now, bear in mind that the stakes of this are pretty high. As in, if an ape has an extra trait on it and they're already selling for hundreds of thousands, if not millions, well, now surely they're worth more if they've got this extra trait. And uh, in theory, yes, that's what Crypto Bros will see it as. So everybody needed to get these traits to be able to flex their ugly monkey in its true final form. So cheating was the way that this was achieved because the game is quite uh, skill based and I mean we've seen the crypto bros right? Nothing but two, uh, two brain cells up there just vibrating to keep each other warm. So yes, 
cheating is the way that they accomplished this and people made bots to look at the, the level generation and the seed. And you might be thinking, Cal, you just said that you should never put both things visible. This is where it gets great. So it was made with JavaScript and, and basically they had a file that was full of rules on how to generate the maps based on the seed. Which, by the way, the seed was visible to everyone because, well, it it has to be for the, you know, server to tell the game to do the thing and people can see it. But just seeing the seed isn't bad. They don't know exactly how that generates a level. So people um, very quickly figured out that the level generation rules were in a file in the, in a JavaScript file in basically plain text so people made bots that read the rules applied it to the seed and worked out what segments of the level were coming next and then had a bot just move their character to the places that it needs to be to avoid obstacles and then yuga labs the founders of board ap Yacht club had a genius fix for this a fix that only monkey bros could come up with they took the game offline for a couple of hours and fixed it. But how did they fix it? Well, according to a Twitter thread by Clearhat, what they did was they took down the game, encrypted the rules file, and then brought it back online. What they didn't do was change how the rules work in the rules file, meaning that anyone who ha already had the unencrypted file, well, it's the same as the encrypted one, but just already but already decrypted. So the rules stayed exactly the same, meaning all the bots that were made to run off the unencrypted rules file still worked on the encrypted rules file, meaning they fixed nothing at all. This, this is the most smooth brain attempt to fix a problem that I think I've ever seen. Because it fixed nothing. So the rampant cheating continued for the next two weeks and recently they took it offline. Uh, it's done. Now after this uh, Twitter thread from Clearhat, deeply investigating the entire thing, well, it was apparent that the cat was out the bag now. Everyone knows that there was rampant cheating and that a lot of these new NFT things and modified NFTs were illegitimately obtained. So Board Ape Yacht Club themselves Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a gold verified sticker, but whatever. Uh, warning, buying sewer passes on secondary market before the final leaderboard is posted is done at your own risk. Be aware that doing so risks buying a sewer pass that is later linked to cheating and reset. So the sewer passes are the NFTs you get based on the score you got in the game and are traded on an open unregulated market like OpenSea or any other NFT trading platform. Meaning, these things that are supposed to be non-fungible are now going to be funged by the Bored Ape Yacht Club themselves and basically put on a blacklist saying, don't buy it, it's cheated, despite the fact that they generated it for the people that cheated. If your brain is just reeling right now, it should be, because none of this makes any sense. And then, of course, you've got the crypto bros that are saying this is why we should have hosted it on um, blockchain hosted the game on blockchain hosted it on web 3 not not crappy web 2 no one no one wants web 2 web web 2 is it's dead to me but the problem there is the exploit was done by being able to read a rules file that should have been encrypted now if it was done on web 3 on the blockchain through smart contracts Literally everything would have been readable because that is the purpose of Web3. It's an online ledger, a public ledger, where you can see everything. You can read smart contracts, which would essentially serve as the rules for this game. You could see the seeds in plain text without even having to dig through a file. So all they've really done is just shown that there's a reason Web3 doesn't host games, because it can't. It would fundamentally break the way games work. And then, in the responses to Clearhat's thing, uh, to his Twitter thread, you've got people... By the way, he posted a bot that he made in a couple of hours, uh, showing that this just straight works. It 100% works. People saying, this seems like false information. 
and, and that it should be vetted. Oh, here we go. I think until this information is vetted, consider it completely unreliable. He's, he's just shown you him doing it. And then even the crypto bros are just turning on one another. It's, it's fantastic. The video seems pretty heavy proof. Yes, because he's done it. I thought you didn't like Yuga Labs. But okay, so that makes his information invalid on the fact that he's proven that the game was cheated. And then this one. This one is my favourite. When somebody who knows nothing about coding and networking speaks facepalm. What does that even mean? He's literally shown everybody that he himself, who knows nothing about coding or networking or whatever, has just managed to exploit the same thing that everybody else was caught doing. These crypto bros are angry because a lot of them were paying other people to cheat on their behalf and they're now realizing that their NFTs are probably going to be blacklisted because this has all come out. What an absolutely crazy world we live in right now. I mentioned before that this seems like some sort of crypto advent calendar where every day something goes wrong, we can just open a door, you know. Who's gone bankrupt today? Oh, it's Do Kwon. Uh, I'll never understand this or why they so valiantly fight for something that is just falling off the face of a cliff. But uh, it is what it is, I guess. Also, I am on my journey to 100k subs here on YouTube. If you are not yet subbed, I'm looking at you. Hit the button down below, like the video, leave a comment, do all the things that the gremlins on YouTube tell you to do. And as always, take care. A massive thank you to our patrons. You guys are absolute legends and I couldn't do this without you. After this video, I'm going to be live over on Twitch, playing some games, chilling, definitely not playing uh, Dookie Dash, uh, that's for sure. I think that's gone for the foreseeable future. But hop over and say hi. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.